to the girls, to the women, to the mothers, to the daughters who hear the music bubbling within, please speak up. We need to hear your voices. Good Monday morning to you on February 10, 2020. This is Sabah Fakuri, your host and producer of Heart and Home Podcast. In today's episode, I just want to talk about last night's Oscars. You just heard the acceptance speech for the best original score, Joker. Hildur Gonadotter, she accepted the award saying to the girls, to the women, to the mothers, to the daughters who hear the music, music bubbling within, please speak up. We need to hear your voices. The Icelandic tunesmith Hildur, I'm going to try to say her name, Gudna Dati ended a 22-year winning streak for the male composers. The 92nd Oscars took place at the Dolby Theater in Hollywood and were televised live on ABC last night. The final Oscars tally, as you might have heard, Parasite took home four Oscars for Best Picture, Best Director, uh, that's Bon Joon-ho, bon Joon Ho, Best International Feature Film, and Best Original Screenplay by Bong Joon-ho and Jin Won Han. Parasite is the first foreign language film to win Best Picture at the Oscars and Parasite is the first movie from South Korea to win the Oscar. Before we get into that movie and who the players are, uh, the rest of the tally, uh, 1917, uh, took home three Oscars, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, two, Ford versus Ferrari, also two, Joker, two, Little Women won, Jojo Rabbit won, Marriage Story won, Bombshell, Toy Story 4, Rocket Man also won, The Irishman 0. As Parasite enjoyed a big night at the Oscars, <clears throat> a lot of people were wondering who the interpreter was. Her name is Sharon Choi, who a lot of them considered her an unsung hero at last night's awards. By the way, she happens to be a director. So here is a director as a translator for another director on stage for someone who won big and there she is standing right next to him. And you know what she said after the awards? She said she wants to make a movie about the award season. So, now that that's over, she can get to her movie. In addition to composer Hildur Gundotter winning the Oscar for Best Original Score, which you just heard in the opening of this episode, Jokin Phoenix won the Academy Award for Best Actor for his performance in Todd Phillips' Joker. On his podcast, Rumble, he talks to Michael Moore in episode six, entitled Everything Must Go, which I'll link in the show notes. Uh, it is a, a one of what Michael Moore terms as his best podcasts, and he just loved the conversation. It's about 90 minutes, and um, he talks about this movie, The Joker. So this uh, revisionist comic book uh, drama stars Phoenix as the Arthur Fleck, 
a social outcast whose shattered dreams of being a hit stand-up comedian that led him down a dark path to become the infamous Batman villain. So a uh, Joker, it premiered at the Venice Film Festival. It won the Golden Lion. Everybody thought it was a shoe in um, It was released in October by Warner Brothers. It had grossed $96 million here in the, U- in the U.S. on its debut weekend. And uh, there was some controversy around the film, but uh, concerns over um, what film critics termed as the Joker might uh, entice violence by some audience members uh, were ignored uh, because it was very popular with uh, moviegoers. Um, It has gone on to earn a staggering $1.06 billion worldwide making Joker the highest grossing R-rated film in history and the most profitable comic book film ever made. Other winners. The Best Actress went to Renee Zellweger for Judy. Best Supporting Actor and Best Production Design uh, were went to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in which Brad Pitt won for support Best Supporting Actor. The Best Supporting Actress went to Laura Dern for Marriage Story. Best Adapted Screenplay went to Indigenous New Zealander of Jewish descent Taika Waititi, who won for Best Adapted Screenplay for his Holocaust satire in Jojo Rabbit. Best Documentary Feature went to American Factory, which Netflix describes as an emotional local story that resonates globally. Directors Stephen Bognar and Julia Reichert have created a masterwork that examines culture, labor, and class struggle and challenges us to consider what unites us instead of what separates us. Barack Obama, our former president, tweeted, his congratulations to Julia and Stephen, uh, saying that the filmmakers behind American Factory uh, told a complex and moving story about a very human consequences of wrenching economic challenge. So that was interesting. Um, best film editing and best sound editing went to Ford versus Ferrari, best costume design to Little Women, Best original song to Elton John, I'm Gonna Love You, I'm Gonna Love Me Again in Rocket Man. Best film, best cinematography, best sound mixing, and best visual effects went to 1917, the World War I film. Uh, best makeup and hair went to Bombshell. Best live action short film went to The Neighbor's Window. And best documentary short subject went to learning to skateboard in a war zone if you're a girl. Uh, And I'll talk about uh, the last uh, uh, winner uh, shortly. Normally, coverage is about fashion, but I'm not going to talk to you about the dresses today, except Spike Lee's suit. The filmmaker Spike Lee used his time on the Oscars red carpet to honor basketball legend Kobe Bryant. The Oscars honored Kobe, the athlete and producer. Did you know, even though Bryant's name is synonymous with basketball championships, that he earned an Oscar in 2018? Back then, Bryant took home the trophy as executive producer for Best Animated Short Film, along with Glenn Keane, who animated and directed the short called Dear Basketball which was based on a letter that Bryant had wrote for the players upon deciding to uh, retire from the NBA following his 2015-2016 season. Uh, There were so many lines in there about, I fell in love with you, and, you know, this season is all I have left to give. And, I mean, it's just very heartwarming and, and, and deeply touching. In their 2018 Oscar acceptance speeches, Keane thanked Bryant for writing the short. 
He says, it's a message for all of us. Whatever form your dream may take, it's through passion and perseverance that the impossible is possible. And in Bryant's uh, response, of course, he was joking. He says, I don't know if it's possible. I mean, as basketball players, we're really supposed to shut up and dribble. But I'm glad we did a little bit more than that. And that little jab was um, against uh, Fox News host Laura Ingram's comment um, about how athletes are not supposed to uh, uh, comment about political matters. Now, Bryant closed out his acceptance speech by extending gratitude to his wife and their family, saying to my wife, Vanessa, our daughters, Natalia, Gianna, and Bianca, ti amo con totu il cuore. You are my inspiration. Thank you so much. The Italian translates to I love you with all my heart. Of course, the couple had another daughter last year. She is now uh, six months old. In the wake of Kobe, uh, Kobe's death, uh, Keen actually spoke with the New York Times about the project, saying that Kobe was the most passionate man who was led by his heart and his intellect. Um, he was a great thinker with an insatiable hunger for learning. As soon as he stepped into animation, he eagerly began soaking up every aspect of it. Working with him was a dream and one of the high points of my career. And also in the New York Times piece, uh, Bryant uh, once said on the short film, quote, animation can capture the emotion in the story in a much more compelling visual way than live action. And Keane's comments uh, make clear that he poured his heart into Dear Basketball. So as I said, the, um, uh, you know, the Oscar uh, for uh, that short was uh, honored uh, two years ago. Um, Kobe Bryant was honored last night. Um, although he was never admitted uh, into the Oscars um, because he only won one um, award, uh, he still was uh, acknowledged. Um, but the Oscar for the Best Animated Short this year went to Matthew Cherry and Karen Rupert Tolliver for Hair Love. And I just love this. Uh, Matthew Cherry is an ex-NFL player and had said that winning the same Oscar that went to, um, you know, fellow ex-pro athlete Kobe Bryant two years ago would be extra special. And guess what? Hair Love won the Short Story Award uh, last night. And in his acceptance speech, Matthew Cherry said he wanted the movie to combat negative stereotypes about black fatherhood and address a lack of representation in animation. And he also dedicated the award to Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace, Mamba. As I mentioned, Kobe will be honored uh, on February 24 at uh, the Staples Center, uh, something that his wife Vanessa has been planning. Uh, so we'll hear more about that. Now, back to last night's big Oscar winners. Now, South Korean social media was flooded with statements of elation and celebration this morning after the local hero Bong Joon-ho and Parasite swept the 2020 Oscars. South Korea's president, Moon Jae-in, also tweeted, saying Parasite moved the minds of the world with a story that is truly Korean. The film is funny and sad. It also is refreshing and superb as a social, social message. So what is Parasite? It, well, it's a drama about class discrimination. It's the first best picture to win for indie distributor Neon, which was founded only in 2017 by Tom Quinn. Parasite is one of the top grossing foreign language films of all time in the U.S. grossing to date, uh, as I mentioned, 35.5 million domestically and 1.65 million globally. 
And guess who's behind the movie? Would you guess a woman? An heiress turned media mogul whose 4.1 billion entertainment empire serves as the foundation of much of the country's cultural output from television, dramas, streamed by millions of viewers worldwide, to K-pop concerts packing arenas around the globe, to movies dominating the box office in Asia. Who is she? Mickey Lee. She's 61, vice chair of the Korean conglomerate CJ Group. She built the country's first movie multiplex, invested in DreamWorks, and has since grown a diverse entertainment empire that helped launch a generation of filmmakers, including Bong Joon-ho. Without Parasite, without her, Parasite might not exist. Quote, I always tell people to watch Parasite more than twice, Milky Lee says. First, you think the poor people are parasitic, but actually, Rich people are parasitic too. All you have more of is money, end quote. So she goes on to say that parasite is about the issue that everybody's facing now, adding that the universal theme of the need for basic human respect represents the kind of cross-cultural content she wants to focus on in the future. In the February 5 issue of Hollywood Reporter magazine, I learn more about um, this woman who I have great respect for. Um, she uh, is from a company uh, called CJ, which was founded back in 1953 by her grandfather, Lee Byung Choi. He was a sugar and flour manufacturing uh, division of his expanding trading company, uh, Samsung. Uh, CJ was created, and over the next 40 years, it grew its food and beverage business and expanded into biotechnology and pharmaceuticals, but had nothing to do with the media. Meanwhile, Lee was working towards studying language and she was at a top university in Korea. She went to universities in Taiwan and Japan. She's fluent in Korean, English, Mandarin, and Japanese. And then she attended Harvard for her master's in Asian studies, where she discovered the knack for teaching and an interest in introducing Korean culture to her Korean American students. And um, basically, she is one of a group of people that has assimilated to the ways of the West. And that is something that happens with many immigrant groups. Um, even though um, our culture, our movies are distributed worldwide um, and they might have grown up with them, that when they finally come to America, then they all want to be American. Um, in 1987, um, her grandfather died and his family control conglomerate was divided among the heirs. The CJ group went to um, uh, her brother, Lee J. Hyun. And um, Milky had just graduated from Harvard. She joined Samsung America's office in Fort Lee, New Jersey. And in late 1994, she was working in its new business division when a lawyer with whom the company often worked called with an investment proposition. He said, Steven Spielberg, David Geffen, and Jeffrey Katzenberg are going to build a studio. Is Samsung interested? So she, she brought the DreamWorks proposal to her uncle and <clears throat> he said no. I mean, he was intrigued, but Basically, he passed. And so it never materialized. And what happened next is in the spring of 1995, DreamWorks reapproached Lee directly. Only this time, Lee didn't go to her uncle. She put together a deal and took it to her brother, who agreed. So um, at that time, CJ was in the midst of spinning off from Samsung as an independent entity. So they uh, invested 300 million to help launch DreamWorks, um, taking a 10.8% stake and distribution rights to its films in Asia, uh, excluding Japan. 
And um, it is said that there are two people that would be no, there would be no dream works without. Katzenberg said, without Paul Allen, the first investor with 500 million, and you guessed it. The second is Milky Lee. Now, Lee lives in Orange County, California. She's divorced. She has no children. She lives in a different world from where she grew up in Korea in the 1960s. But one thing isn't so different, however. She calls her generation and Bong Joon Ho's generation Hollywood kids. Having grown up on Western content, she said, I felt like America really had the freedom of a wide range of creativity. Back in the 1990s, Korea only had small video stores. Lee and her brother invested in cinema construction to, glow, to grow the local film market. Their company also created a fund to support domestic filmmakers. In 1988, CJ opened Korea's first multiplex, and today its uh, cinema affiliate is the country's largest chain, holding about 50% of the market. Now, other exhibitors followed, bringing the movie-going audience in Korea to the fifth biggest box office territory in the world. Now, Lee says her goal now is to further expand CJ's worldwide influence. As Korea's only studio with foreign direct distribution, it has released more than 100 movies in the United States and more than 50 elsewhere. And it possesses a massive library of feature scripted and unscripted intellectual property. Um, and so we're gonna be seeing more of her. Uh, just a little footnote on um, the uh, director, Boon Joon Ho. Um, he shared his uh, early sketches for Parasite, Parasite. and um, you know, I, he, he just, he has, it was a story that centers around two mirroring families. The wealthy, who were the Parks, and the impoverished, who were the Kims. Um, I don't want to give too much away of the film, um, but basically there are a few twists and turns, um, but there was something that was very instrumental that a lot of people didn't know what it meant, and last night we got to find out what this rock meant. Um, there was a scholarly rock that was um, actually in the film. And in it, um, uh, the director last night shares that as a boy, uh, he went for mountain hikes with his father looking for rocks, uh, you know, that were similar as scholar stones. Um, and in recent years, however, collecting them, it's not, you know, it's not more common, uh, especially for the Korean young. Um, but for his generation, it was very important. Um, so um, he said that inserting uh, into the early stages of Parasite was, uh, you know, deliberately strange choice for, for others that might have thought of it. Um, but, um, you know, he says that when Min presented The Rock to Kim's, that um, it, it, it is metaphorical. Um, so there is a lot of metaphor in it. Um, I, I just love everything about last night. I love the players. Um, I love it when women can succeed, when other uh, nationals can make it. It is uh, something that <clears throat> we also strive for in our culture, in Arab American culture, it's something that I've thought of as well. And we do have a lot of people that are interested in film and we uh, need to combat our own stereotypes of the villain and uh, the not so positive images of, of the portrayal of Arabs um, in the movie industry. So uh, we hope that we'll see more positive and I just love going to the movies, so I hope that you'll see this movie and uh, some of the others uh, as well that won last night. I haven't seen 1917 yet, so I, have to, I hope to go see that as well. But for sure, on my list, number one is definitely Parasite. 
I hope you have a wonderful week. Much love to everyone in this uh, upcoming week of Valentine's Day. And uh, to all you women out there, single, divorced or not, we love you.